Thank you, Finance Chair Ferreris Copeland and Education Chair Drum for your leadership. Chancellor Freenia, I will ask you as always about school seats and lunch. I look forward to no longer asking you those questions as we achieve those victories. Uh, a quarter million out of 780,000 public stu school students who are eligible for free or reduced priced meals do not participate. School lunch participation rates drop uh, from 81% in elementary to 61% in middle school to 80, uh, to 41-38% uh, in high schools. Uh, with requests from the Speaker, the City Council budget response, support from CSA, UFT, DC 37, could we count on fully funding universal school lunch with $20 million to get $59 million from the federal government this year? This is a conversation that is ongoing and we will continue to have, but I want to reassure, as I have in other meetings, no child in New York City is deprived of lunch, ever. 76% are entitled to free lunch, and those who may, on a given day or week or whatever, not have the required monies, will get free lunch. I will put out a memo in P Weekly, which is what I do, to make sure that all principals understand that the cafeteria workers are and should be giving out lunch to any student who needs it. I think, and I've said this before, and I've worked with some of you, you know, in committees, to me, the school lunch cafeteria environment is as important as some of the other things that we're doing. And I know that we had picked seven schools um, two years ago to be models, and we started by redoing the cafeterias. And I was just sharing with you that one of the schools in uh, Coney Island has redone the cafeteria, has increased the kind of the, the salad bar and other things, and she said she went from 800 students, middle school, uh, getting lunch to almost 1,100, actually Marie Bender School. So I'm happy to take you to visit this, but I will certainly put in writing to all principals that no child at any time should be deprived of lunch as long as they're on the lunch line. So, so I think just along those lines, making sure that it's an official memo that has Absolutely. contractual binding rights so that local 372 lunch workers know that they uh, are able to provide this and that they will not be penalized in any way. And I think along the same lines, that no member of the school may engage in billing or collections practices for families or children who receive food for free in the cafeteria well, without paying. I, I'm going to double, the first one I can do, the second one I'll let you know. Oh, okay, okay. I, I think it's just important. Yeah, because the first one has been practiced, I mean, I was a principal for 10 years, mm -hmm. and this was common practice, and it was common practice across the whole entire And when I was a superintendent and I had 184 schools, common practice. So I will make sure, but I'll get back to you with whatever we put out in writing by the end of the day. Thank you. Uh, I also want to thank you for agreeing that the Upper East Side needs school seats at the preliminary budget. Following the hearing, we learned from DOE that there were 904-year-olds that applied for less than 600 seats on the Upper East Side. We had a rally for school seats with Comptroller Stringer, Public Advocate James, Borough President Brewer, Senator Kruger, Assemblymember Seawright and Court, Councilmember Grodnick, parents and children. Has the Department of Education made any progress in opening new school seats on the Upper East Side for this coming school year? Well, I was just told that there were 700 applicants for what are 500 seats, and my feeling is, again, give me another three weeks. Generally, what happens, parents on the Upper East Side in particular have safety seats. You know, they think of pre-K as sort of like college and may apply to more than one place. So I think um, a month from now, we can review this and see if those numbers are still there. We will make sure that we do this. They, we've added 90 seats to the Upper East Side. and So, uh, so how many to total seats are we up to? Which is the number? 497. So, th so that's less than last year. Last year we, we, we were no, we up. Added, we, it went from we, we lost seats, though. We lost seats. So, so when you missing, took away the seats and then added missing, 90, okay. we actually lost 22 okay, seats. Again, I noticed PS6 has two additional, and they had none when I was a principal there. So, but anyway, yeah. answer that directly. So, right, go sit over there. So, so I think one of the I'm frustrating pieces, we're, we're, we're actually losing so. seats on the east side this coming year versus gaining them. So uh, just whatever we can do to open previously offered seats and then working with community-based providers who are willing to provide full-day oh. seats. And I think we could get another 160 seats tomorrow if DOE is willing to say yes to the community-based providers and forcing the schools to offer certain seats that were offered previously. Okay, I'm gonna let my pre-K expert answer that. Yeah. I have to swear okay. you in. Oh, so. you have to swear him. Luke, I, Lucas. I need to swear you in, so if you could just raise your right hand. Yes. You solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and to answer council member questions honestly. 
Yes, I do. And would you state your name for the record, please? Uh, Lucas Kaler. I'm the executive director for Data Thank Analytics. You. Um, so the 90 seats that we've added are since this last April. Um, as you know, the, we've lost the um, seats at Wagner Middle School, which was a one-year arrangement. This does not yet incorporate the seats that we will potentially gain as we convert uh, class size from 18 to 20 by adding the additional paraprofessional in each room. Um, we are continuing to work with the SCA to identify any possible space that can be used for additional pre-K capacity, and we will be putting out the RFP in the summer, and we would certainly hope to work with any community-based providers that are able to provide additional full-day seats on the Upper East Side. So I, I guess I'm just disappointed that there aren't additional seats from where we were before, and just I, I am relying and I'm counting on you, Chancellor, please take care of these four-year-olds so that they don't have to commute down here. It's a 45-minute commute on a very crowded subway, and it's just not the right place for a four-year-old. Okay, we will definitely look into this. Thank you. Sorry.